Hey, Rational Muscle here. I hope you like the new intro. Uh, and pardon my voice. Nasty summer cold going on here. Um, I have my next video coming out in the series, Why Didn't Your God Think of That? Uh, it's coming up in a few days, but this is just a quick video on something I read today concerning chimps and the parallels to humans and what we would call morality, or at least what some of us would call the foundations of morality. And even dismissing the term morality, you really cannot dismiss emotion, as we're going to soon see. Research over the past three decades has revealed the extent to which chimpanzee societal evolution mirrors that of humans, particularly so at the most base or historic level. Chimps, our closest relatives, genetically speaking, share the vast majority of our emotions and what many of us would call even our higher moral values. Love, self-sacrifice, sharing, hatred, yes, hatred, and rituals after death. Now, these are strong human moral values, yet chimps have no God, no authority for their sense of morals, be they good or bad. What saith the theist to this? Do you posit that these emotions or moral behaviors are just coincidental mirrors of human morality? Or that God instilled morals within the chimp community through a different mechanism? Now, chimps are far from perfect, mind you, and is exactly what one would expect from a common ancestor to humans. This article, for example, in New Scientist Life, points out a seven-year study done on chimpanzees and over a period of seven years over 5,000 hours of observation they observed 753 aggressive coalitions where they cooperated to fight enemies and 421 instances of meat sharing. Now as this study points out as well as an earlier study published in Science points out chimps cooperate without getting a direct reward right here. Very interesting, because this is something you would not expect from a chimpanzee. Most cooperation is indeed from a selfish level. In other words, they do something for each other in order to get something for each other. But this is how human evolution evolved, according to the non-theists. And it makes perfect sense because we see it within chimpanzees. And we see them evolving into a higher standard of morality and cooperation, doing things for each other where they get nothing in return, including laying down one's life for a friend. Now. I find this very ironic because Jesus himself said no greater love exists between humans than laying down one's life for a friend. Yet chimps do it, so surely a chimp messiah is not the answer here, folks. So where did they learn these patterns of behavior? Where did they learn to share meat and tools? Now, where did they learn to kill enemies in cooperation? That sounds very warlike. Where did they learn some of our most cherished moral behaviors? Unfortunately, I believe this is from the same place they learned some of our least cherished moral behaviors, killing. Chimps kill chimps for their land. Rival gangs murder each other in turf wars, scientists say. Now, this should sound eerily familiar to anyone familiar with the Old Testament. And I'm not just going to pick on the Bible here, folks. This has been going on throughout history, uh, people killing people for land. But in the Old Testament... It was a directive of Yahweh to kill for land in almost every instance where slaughter of an enemy was concerned. Almost every instance. Lastly, look at the study on chimps and death. Chimps face death in human-like ways. This is a really beautiful story. I highly suggest you read it. It was published in Current Biology. Um, so do check this out. I'm going to provide the links below and check out each of the other studies too, because there's pros and cons to everything that I'm saying here. I would like your opinion on this. Uh, but chimps mourn in a way that is very, very similar to the way humans mourn, especially my ancestors, the Native Americans, and even more so the Egyptians. In fact, in Genesis 50, we read this, Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full 40 days, which was their custom, for the time that was required for embalming. And then the Egyptians mourned him for 70 days. Now here in this study, we look at two different chimps who are mourning the deaths of their infant. And after the two infants died, chimpanzees' mothers, Jari, and I cannot pronounce this one, continue to carry on and groom their offspring's lifeless bodies for up to 68 days. That's really awful close to that 70 days, isn't it? I think that that's really, really strange. But this cannot in any way be seen as anything less than a display of intense, what I would call human emotion, what we would call human emotion. Now, here's a few questions to, uh, to consider. Uh, when these chimps were mourning the death of their infants, were they doing so because they were aware of their own mortality? 
that they were just going to turn to dust? Or are they merely ignorant animals unaware of God's greater purpose in life? Or is God excluded them entirely because they're not part of the human race? Either way, I find the 68 to 70 day thing a little bit strange and definitely uh, compelling. So let's recap real quick. Chimps kill for land without a God telling them to do so. Granted, this is on a much smaller scale than humans do and did when their gods tell them to do that. But a morality or a lack of morality in discussion is not much different. Also, chimps share, love, and mourn, again, without a deity telling them how to do so or when to do so. They have punishment for stealing and murder within communities, just like humans, without a chimp Moses giving them 10 directives from their chimpanzee god. To the theist, I ask three questions. Where did chimps derive these moral values? Or are these moral values at all? And if not, how would you distinguish these behaviors from ones you deem godly or moral in humans? Thanks for watching.